So hi, everyone, and thank you for joining this session. Uh, before I begin, a few words about, about myself. Uh, like Alex said, my name is Oi. I'm a software engineer here in uh, one of Accenture's labs, Accenture's cyber R&D lab. Uh, we're sitting in Israel, and we are doing a lot of very interesting projects uh, relating, related to graphs. And today, I will show one of these uh, very small projects, which we call Simple. So uh, let's quickly go over the agenda. We'll start by a very short background story to have uh, uh, some uh, context in our mind. And then uh, I'll show how Cypher queries are typically uh, written in Python. And once we look at that, we will want to ask uh, how we can improve that, how we can do better. To this end, I will show you the uh, basically the main topic of this session, which is simple, uh, the Python package for writing Cypher queries. And then I will quickly go over the future roadmap for this project and invite you all to contribute. So the background story is very simple. Uh, let's say we have a graph database containing person nodes. And then we ask what kind of actions we might want to do with our database. So uh, one thing we might want to do is create new person nodes, right? Like mutating the database. We might want to get some properties of the persons, of the people that are in our database. For example, a person's age. Or we might want to get some connectivity information about the person nodes that are in our graph. For example, the person's relatives. So for each of these uh, questions, we need to write a Cypher query. And then, obviously, embed it in, uh, in our code, in our case, Python code. Uh, Okay, so let's let's see uh, just a very uh, short example of how queries are sometimes written in Python. Uh, so for, for this example, we take uh, the question, how do we, uh, or, or actually we want to query the database uh, for each person's age. Uh, so to do that, we are instantiating a Neo4j driver instance and defining a method called getPersonAge that accepts as an argument, argument the person name. And then uh, we basically use the, the driver or, or the session that this driver gives us to uh, uh, create the query right here and just run it on the session to retrieve the results. Now, the part I want to focus on is the query itself, right? So in this case, we have uh, a string, an F string, and it defines the query, right? We do a match operation to bring all the person nodes and then filter it by the person name and then return its age. Pretty, pretty easy. But uh, the thing is that as, as a software developer, there are a few things that, that bother me here. Um, so one thing is, for example, uh, that this is like a, a, a literal string that's in my code. And, uh, you know, we software developers, we don't really like having strings, long strings in our code. And you can imagine that as the Cypher queries uh, get more complicated, this string can become very, very long. Um, so that's one thing that, that bothers me. The other thing is that this query is written precisely for the uh, uh, use case it's needed for, right? In this case, uh, um, obtaining or retrieving a person's age. So it, it would be difficult to reuse this query in other, perhaps similar but different, use cases. Uh, and the third thing is that if I want to write this uh, string or query from scratch by myself, I can easily do some, some mistakes, even just simple syntax errors that will make this cipher uh, invalid. Um, so, so, so I'm trying to basically um, uh, list what things are kind of not so good in writing the cipher as a string in Python. So to improve on that, we can have several requirements. The first requirement would be to avoid having complicated cipher strings that are laying around our code. Uh, we might want to have some uh, auto-completion feature that as we write the cipher, the IDE or the auto-completion engine in the IDE suggests how we can uh, 
continue or complete our uh, cipher clause. We might want to be able to uh, uh, implement the cipher in a reusable manner, right? So we won't have uh, duplication and we will avoid repetition. And uh, we want to be able to manipulate cipher statements, to be able to add them, etc. cetera. Uh, so these are just a, a few improvements that we, 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 we think uh, are very uh, useful if we would have them. To this end, uh, we basically uh, wrote a pack Python package called simple, which I'm going to uh, show here. So uh, like I said, simple is a Python package. And in, in one sentence, this is a package that is designed for optimizing the process of writing cipher queries, right? It's, it's a kind of a productivity tool. And uh, this project is actually open source and available in the link right here in front of you. Uh, and I'll say a few more words about it uh, in the end. Uh, so before uh, we go into the de details of, of uh, Simple, uh, just as, as a side note, if you're in interested, uh, this, this uh, package is basically uh, uh, built or created while following a builder design pattern, right? And the Simple interface exposes a fluent API, which means you can uh, chain methods uh, one after the other for building your object, in this case, building the query. So, so let's let's see how it looks like actually. So the first requirement we had was to avoid involved strings. Uh, so what I did, I took the example from before, and instead of having uh, or defining the string, I I'm using here the uh, query builder interface, the simple query builder. Uh, so uh, if you recall, we had like uh, three clauses in the cipher. Uh, and instead of, of uh, writing them literally, we are uh, using or invoking four methods, each of which is uh, uh, responsible for creating the relevant part in the Cypher query. So we have a match clause, and then um, a no definition, oh, sorry, and then uh, a where clause, which filters the results, and then a return statement, right? So first of all, we can see that instead of having the string, we have a concatenation of functions. The second thing we want to have is auto-completion. Uh, uh, so since we're using methods now, or functions, instead of literal strings, we automatically get uh, auto-completion, uh, assuming that our IDE uh, uh, has this uh, auto-completion feature, right? Um, but not only that, we also get uh, a more advanced auto-completion, a context-aware context, -aware context uh, auto-completion which means that the auto-completion engine will, will only suggest uh, uh, the uh, methods that are relevant to the current state of your query, depending on what kind of statements you, you have written so far. So in this example, uh, we're just starting to write the query. Uh, therefore, the auto-completion suggests only a handful of cipher clauses that, that are uh, uh, relevant or valid as the start of a Cypher query. For example, the match, the call, and the merge operations. So uh, this feature I find very useful because you do only get what you want to see, and not all uh, a complete full-blown list of all Cypher uh, clauses. The third thing is regarding Cypher use. So let's consider a, a scenario where we want to do two things. One is querying a single, single person's age, and the other is uh, querying all person ages from our database. So these are the cipher queries, and like you can see, they are very similar. The only difference being the filtering operation done right here. So uh, um, like a good software developer, we might uh, I might do something like that. I would like to avoid the duplication, and, and to do so, I will uh, uh, build the query uh, dynamically. So for example, here, uh, I'm uh, instead, uh, uh, again, referring to the get person age method. And this time, I'm uh, uh, building my query, my string query, dynamically. I start by defining the match operation, and then if a person name is given, 
in the function argument, then I concatenate the filtering operation. And eventually, uh, I concatenate the return stream, right? And again, this, this is like a pretty uh, short example, but you can imagine that for more complicated strings, more complicated queries, the string become very long and it, it's kind of difficult to, to maintain all these uh, spaces and new lines properly. So with the builder, we can easily implement the same thing or a similar thing, but using builder objects instead of strings. Uh, so that's one, one uh, very nice use case that shows simple Cypher reuse. And the last thing is uh, regarding Cypher uh, manipulation. So uh, co considering a slightly different scenario, let's say we want to create or get uh, graph nodes, in this case, person nodes. The Cypher query for creating the nodes would be something like merge p person and then the person's properties. The Cypher query for getting or fetching these nodes would be very similar. Just instead of a merge operation, we would have a match operation. And the common part is the, uh, the two last two lines of the query. So uh, how would we do that in, in Simple's query builder interface? We could define a, a, a function called build, builder person, which is uh, responsible for creating this second part of the query. And then once we have that, we can easily uh, uh, create or define two other methods one for each use case that basically utilizes the pure builder person method and adds to it the appropriate uh, cipher clause. So in the create person case, we uh, add it a merge operation. And in the get person case, we add the match operation. So I hope that by now I convinced you that uh, using the query builder interface uh, can be much easier to maintain and, and use. Um, but there are also uh, some future uh, features which are uh, somewhat more advanced. Uh, for example, uh, we could have, or we would like to have some ontological uh, query verification in simple. For those of us who are using ontologies and want to verify that the Cypher query that we write is actually valid. Uh, things like query complexity analysis that is very important as our data set grows or scales. And uh, other things like uh, publishing advanced Cypher snippets that we think might be uh, common and use usable by others. So I won't go in into the details of these uh, uh, topics. It's outside the scope of this uh, session, but uh, if anything here uh, rings a bell to you and you find it interesting, uh, you're welcome to contact. Okay, so I presented simple, now what? Uh, like I said, it is open source and available on this link on GitHub. Uh, this project is under continuous improvement, therefore we invite everyone to contribute and to use it, of course. Uh, if you like the project, please spread the word. And for more advanced uh, features that are coming up, you are welcome to contact us or me. Finally, uh, just a few acknowledgements. Uh, first of all, Jason Koo from New4j. Thank you, Jason, for all your uh, ideas and, and uh, great insights that helped a lot to this project. And from Accenture Labs here in Israel to Moshe Haddad and Yael Zamir, uh, thank you guys uh, both for the support and contribution. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thanks everyone for uh, joining and have a nice day. Thank you very much, Rui. This was great. Uh, super interesting. Um, uh, can I see exactly Gal, Ruven, Felix, you know the drill, clapping, virtual emoji clapping. That's <clears throat> that's what we do uh, here after after each presentation. Um, Impressive. Uh, <laughs> uh, but people people liked your your uh, your presentation a lot. So uh, Prashant wrote this repo needs way more stars. So um, I, yeah. I think absolutely go go and star it. G give it uh, give it some uh, some love. Um, Michael replies, he just did this uh, and he wants proper Cypher builders in all nice. the languages. So um, 
uh, I think that gives some some more ideas for future projects. So uh, maybe that 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 can happen. Uh, so very cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, we have a minute or so. So any any mm -hmm. anything particular? Any one any, question. One question exactly. So <laughs> I mean, first come first served maybe. So it depends um, if you um, if you're a quick typer. Uh, then uh, I can uh, I can read out one one for Rui. Um, otherwise, you have the uh, uh, the the resources there. So uh, here's the link again uh, to Simple, um, where you can find the team, where you can find Rui, and where you can actually um, you know raise issues, uh, chat, and talk about um, questions or requirements. Here's a question from Michael. Let's do that. Are, Are there, there any, any partial particular features that make it easy to build? To use it as a DSL? Uh, well, by DSL, I guess he, he refers to a description description language. Description. Can I, you say what do you mean by that, uh, Michael? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm not so sure what DSL, DSL. is in this, in this regard. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, Cypher Builder. Builder. Well, I'm not sure I get the questions. I'm sorry. Domain specific language, right? So, are there any partial Python features that make it easy to use as a domain specific language? Uh, well, I'm still not sure I can answer it properly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think that the main features are what I just showed, but but if there is something uh, more specific that Michael refers to, uh, Michael, I will be happy to 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 if you can contact me and describe it, and if it's it's uh, interesting enough that we can work on it. Sounds good. All right, cool. Thank you very much, Rui, again for presenting for Thanks. being being Thank part you of for this. having me, and uh, see you soon.